Come Holy Spirit, we pray open the eyes of our spirit and our minds. Amen. Let the eyes of our spirit and our minds be open. Amen. Open the eyes of our spirit and our mind. Amen. Breathe over your word and give you life. Amen. Lord, let us not remain the same after your war. Amen. Forever, let us not recover from the effect of your war. We bind every spirit of buying and selling and confusion, misunderstanding of God's word. God's word. We bind them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let only Jesus be seen. Amen. And let only you be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, I have the privilege of talking to you about the topic ROAT. You know what that means? Restoration, Restoration of all things. <laughs> so if you want to be shortening that, that would be a good shot for it. Though you can't make the O too big because it's off, so that's how they do it. ROAT. Restoration of all things. And I'm talking to you today a subtopic called Alabaster's worship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know the those wonderful, precious daughters of Zion. They wrote, they wrote, they read to us two scripture. And some of you may feel like Pastor even like what he likes drum. Why is he reading the same story from two different scripture? Don't quick to judge. You will find out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be quick to judge. And your thoughts are fine. This year, we're trusting God as the word of God that is dropped, you know, to, that is dropped to us is restoration of all things. And restoration of all things, what does restoration mean? We say restoration is different from English definition. English definition means to bring something from you know, the, the, the original state back to the normal state. Re restoration with God is not that. It is 1,000 times better than the original state. If you don't believe me for me to make a good explanation. In the Garden of Eden, you saw Adam and Eve, and God will visit them in the evening. Bible says in the evening. Did you see them with the streets of gold? No. But in the new Jerusalem, you are going to find the streets of gold. What, did you see the river of life in the Garden of Eden? No. There are only four rivers. The Bible says part of it. It wasn't the river of life. So things get better at the end with God. And 1,000, 1 million fold better. The Bible says in Joel chapter 2, verse 25 to 27. That's where that wonderful son of Zion read, I will restore to you the year. You know, when you read the Bible, sometimes in different versions, it helps you. I didn't know that there are three levels of. Uh, 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 um, no. Um, the crane cowards. There is this, the swarming, I don't know, right? Then there is, and then which one is the next? The crawling, and then the consuming, right? Yeah. That's serious. Praise the Lord. So if the, one, if the first one doesn't finish the job, the second, the second one will take over. And where the second one stops, the third one will take over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, technical team. Don't worry, I want to use my voice a lot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think I'm good to go. All right, so then let's. Uh, for a perfect understanding, the passage that we read, I'm on slide three. You guys should pay attention to where I am right now. For our perfect understanding, so that you, you let people follow. You are still on slide one, I'm on slide three. For our perfect understanding, um, the passage we read in Matthew 26 and verse one to uh, 16, and the one we read in Luke 7, 36 to 50, you wouldn't understand the two. The, if I just read only the passage in Matthew to you, without the one in Luke, there are some information that will be missing. Okay. Now, there are about five characters. Let's pick the main, the main passage that we have. is Matthew 26. Uh, there are about five characters. Who can help me with the characters that you, you saw there? Five characters. I need you to be fast, guys. Jesus. 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 This. The what? Disciples. Well, okay. Disciples. Yeah. Disciples of who? Jesus. Number three. The woman. The woman. Then woman number four. 
Yes. Simon. Simon. Now, this Simon. Judas. Judas. Yeah, that's the disciple of Jesus. Oh. Let's put that together. So we have about five, right? So I want you to get something to, to understand. Please pay attention. Please follow me and pay attention. Okay? Um, that being said, this Simon is not Simon Peter. The Bible calls him Simon the leper. It's not Simon Peter that he's talking about here because there's, no, there's not only one Simon in Israel. Just like we don't have only one uh, um, Esther in the whole, in this church, even in IUP. You know, we have a lot. So the same, the same thing, the same scenario here. This Simon is a leper. It wasn't the Simon Peter, the disciple of Jesus. Hello? Hi. The Bible says in verse 3, let's read. Verse 3 of Matthew 26. I they think. Okay, go to 4. And consulted that they might kill, sorry, that they might take Jesus by subtil, subtility and kill him. All right, go keep on reading. Right Verse 6. Now Jesus was in Bethany, mm -hmm. in the house of Simon the leper. All right, where, was, where, does, where did this Simon the leper live? Bethany. Bethany. Who else was living in Bethany if you know your Bible well? Bethany. Mary and Martha and Lazarus, their brother that Jesus brought back to life. They were also living in the same city. And this guy, Simon the leper, was in the same city. So they are not the same. It means Jesus often went to that city. Bethany. Praise the Lord. This Simon the leper had received a miracle of healing from the Lord Jesus Christ. They, call, they still call him leper because human being, even if your, de if your destiny has changed, they still call you by your old problem or challenges. <laughs> that woman that has one eye, that used to, or they will say that used to have one eye, even though now she sees. That's human being for you. They put a stigma over your life and they begin to call you with that, you know, that shortcoming. That thing that is not okay or that's not perfect in your life. That's what they would describe you with. You know that those people that are poor go to their house. Why do we have to describe people that way? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They still call him Simon the leper even after he had received healing. This man has gotten healing from Jesus and then he invited Jesus over for a dinner so that he can celebrate with him. That's what happened in this story. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, let's move on. That's Simon. One thing I wanted to first speak here. Simon was a Pharisee. Did you see that when we read it in the book of Luke? What? Who are Pharisees? Holier than thou people. They always like to sit in front. If a Pharisee is here, he will not want to sit in this front seat. He will say, you either put his chair here or here. Because they want to be seen. When they are going to church, they carry big Bibles and pray on the road. So that everybody will see them and take... Even when they, are, they stop at each corner, even in the market before they buy stuff. So that people will say they are religious. And Jesus had so much problem with them because they twisted the law so much. He said, if you do this, if you, if you, if you, if you say your father, if, if, you say, if you don't give something to your father, it's fine. If you say it's going to be given to God. They just twisted a lot of you know, the law. They said, in fact, you, you don't have to do this. All you needed to do is to wash uh, Make sure when you come from market, wash your hands, that keep you holy. There's so, so much crazy stuff. They, 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 they were just crazy religious sect. And they were not having the life of God. And they were one of, some of the most hot enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ and the truth when Jesus was here. So Simon was a Pharisee and then he invited Jesus over. Jesus still went. Number, number one thing I wanted to take away, Jesus honors all invitations. If you will call him into your heart, he will come. If you will call him into your situation, he will come. Jesus never turns down any invitation, any genuine invitation from any man, no matter how bad the person is. You know, some people will invite us. We will not go, but we are not Jesus. John chapter 6, verse 20, 37 says, And him that come to me, I will know why he's cast away. Jesus honors every invitation. He went to this man's house, even though he was a Pharisee, even though he wasn't living right. And he had received a miracle. Don't worry, you will find out. All right. For time's sake, I mean, guest hosting um, in, um, in Israel. Guest hosting in the East. Brethren, pay attention. 
in the East, Sanders like that, I are warm. The time that the Lord Jesus Christ was here. Look at those and they were open. Those were the ones that were warm. And that, those were the sandals that the Lord Jesus Christ also wore. They were not probably having this cover of shoes that you had. Maybe they would do some with a leather because of cold. But this was their main stuff. And the rows were lit littered. The rows were the streets were littered with animal, animal dogs, camel, sheep, cows, gold. You know, they had a lot. So you see the dung everywhere. So when people go on the street and they came into your house, they are going to come in with a load of smell and dumps on their shoes. So this is what the host of the house does when you invite somebody. Because you know there's no way they are going to come in clean. You will call, number one, when they come into your house, you will call the worst servant you don't like to go and wash their feet and dry with towel. That was why when Jesus was washing the feet of the disciples, you will understand what he was doing. It was the worst and the most abased job to do. You don't give it to somebody. You don't give it to your child. You give it to the, the worst, the most disdain of your servant to go and wash the guest's feet and clean it with towel and dry it up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, if you didn't do that because the person is not that important, you will give them the water to wash their feet by themselves. Are you understanding me? Yeah. All right, number one. Number two, you will anoint their heads. Number three, you will anoint their feet. Number four, you will give them a kiss on their cheek. Whether a man or a woman, it's a sign that you welcome them into your home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. But Simon did not do that to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Luke chapter 7, verse 44 to 46. Luke 7. You see, now I'm good. Because you didn't, that account was not depicted in Matthew. So that's why Luke is necessary. So if you read the book of Matthew, you will not see this thing I'm saying. Luke 7, let's read uh, from, the, from there. Uh, if you love Jesus, want to go read. If you hate him, don't. <laughs> Do you see this room? I enter your house. You give me no water to my feet. No, Thomas, you're fine. Don't worry. You gave me no food. But this one that was not sick. That's why I gave you. You did not anoint my head with oil. But this one that was not sick. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Was that clear? Yeah. Does you think Jesus lied? No. Can Jesus lie? No. That was the story. Jesus was the one who wasn't reported. He said, you, I came to your house, Simon. Not Simon Peter, Simon the leper. Even though you have received a miracle. You have seen the power of God in manifestation. You have been healed from being a leper. I came into your house. You did not give me water to wash my feet. The, the boss you can do is not to give water to somebody to wash their feet. If you cannot send your servant to come and wash their feet and dry it with towel. You will give them the water at least for them to wash their feet by themselves. Simon didn't do that. He did not anoint the head of Jesus. And he did not anoint his feet. Neither did he kiss him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number one, lesson. Simon took Jesus for granted. Brethren, that's what we do every time. We wonder why God does not show. We wonder why things don't, don't why we have not changed. Why things don't change? Why we don't get answer to prayer? Number one, we take Jesus for granted. Jesus came into the house of Simon. Simon did not give Jesus water to wash his feet. He did not kiss him. He did not put oil on his head or his feet. There were four things he was supposed to do. This man did not even do one. He treated Jesus with disdain, with lack of respect. How do we, you know, treat Jesus with disdain? Number one, you know, we, we, when we say too much, Familiarity brings what? Content. When you come to a church and you don't just summon, you are taking Jesus for granted. I'm just telling you, no matter the excuses you give, excuses are like shoes. You will always find the one that fits. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we come late to church, we are taking Jesus for granted. Do you go based to your office? Do you wonder now why we don't get change? 
why the word of God doesn't change our life because when we come here and we are on Facebook and social media in the church, we're taking Jesus for granted. When we come here and begin to exist in the church, you are taking Jesus for granted. I am telling you, please change. Some of us, we don't discuss outside. When we come to church, we begin to talk, especially in the time of prayer and the word of God going on. That is, nothing can be worse than that, that we are not giving honor to the personality of Jesus. Then the Bible says Jesus is the word. Amen. Amen. We take Jesus for granted every time when we are coming to church and we never had any expectation. Then the Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. If I ask you this morning, what was your expectation when you are coming? You probably don't have anyone. Then how do you want God to do anything when you are going? Always tie a service to an expectation. Even if you don't get for free, come back the next day. Never give up. What was your expectation when you were leaving your house? You are probably not. You are taking God for granted. We are so used to the way we do things. Nothing changes. Year in and year out, we come in and we go. Nothing changes. Because we have taken Jesus for granted. Like someone did. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number one lesson. Never take Jesus for granted. We take Jesus for granted when we don't study our, the word of God. When we don't take time to pray. When we all, be, when we all we believe is walk, 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 walk. And there's no time for fellowship with God. We think we can do it by our strength. The Bible says by strength shall no man prevail. Brethren. Stop taking Jesus for granted this year. It will not help you. All right, let's move on for time's sake. Simon and his friends treat Jesus as a commoner. They didn't treat Jesus as a guest because when a guest came into your house in the east, what are the four things I said you're going to do? You, you will either ask a servant to wash their feet or give them water to do it at least by themselves. Then you anoint their head, anoint their feet, and give them a kiss. Simon never did any of this. I didn't even know how he welcomed Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, the Almighty God, the creator of the heaven and earth, came to his house and then he treated him like a commoner, like no person. You know, many of us have thought that if Jesus lives in our house, our lives will change. Brethren, I, I, I beg to differ. Your life probably will go worse because of your mindset of Jesus. Because you will treat him as a commoner. You will not know when he came in. That's why. We will remain the same even if Jesus lives in our house. Because he does. You know why? When you, woke up, when you wake up in the morning, what do you say? You pick up your food. Have you ever said, Holy Spirit, good morning, Jesus, good morning, before you pick up your food? That's taking Jesus for granted. It is living with you, but nothing will happen in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, time will not permit me. Story behind the alabaster box. That's where I want to go. Now, let me explain this to you. When the woman broke the alabaster box, many of us may not understand the story behind it. Let me help you. Maybe it will, you know, it, it helps. <laughs> in, the, in, in Israel, Every woman that reached a marriageable age, maybe say 20 to 21, I'm giving an example. The family will buy them an alabaster box. Some people call it alabaster flask or a jar. The family, the father and the mother will buy that girl an alabaster box with oil inside. This oil is very precious. Let me tell you. The size and the, the, more the, the, the value of that alabaster oil depends on the rich, how rich the family is. In the family of billionaires, you can imagine the kind of box, alabaster box that girl will carry. If they are millionaires in dollars, imagine what they will carry. That's the, 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 the background story. What does the alabaster box, what do they need it for? When a man asks you to marry him, you break the alaba alabaster box at his feet, in meaning to give him the highest honor and to say, yes, I desire to marry this man. That's why they carry the alabaster box. When that woman broke the ala alabaster box at the feet of Jesus, that's an example of how precious the alabaster box is. It's not a joke. 
If something, the, 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 when I was doing the research, some of them cost one year wage. For one year, you will save the money to buy. Imagine your salary for one year to buy just a box of oil to accept a man. When the woman brought the Alabacta box at the feet of Jesus, he wasn't asked, she wasn't asking Jesus to marry her. She was recognizing Jesus as the bridegroom of the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And she was giving her best form of worship and service to the master. And she was saying him, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I honor you. The highest honor. No wonder. You know, I've read this story several times. I don't understand why Jesus said, everywhere this story is told, this woman shall be, shall be spoken of be remember, for the remembrance of her brethren. I read the Bible. There was no single man that did Jesus much honor than this woman. Don't worry, will, you will find out. Remember, I said, when Jesus came into the house, when they walk on the road in the east, the road were littered with dung. Right? Animal dung, cow, camel, sheep, you know, chicken, everything. They had so much. Because Israel only had two jobs, most of them. Farming and livestock. Praise the Lord. Now imagine a guest coming to your house. They come with their sandals full of dogs and dirt because the roads are dusty. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And that woman came and poured, the, broke the alabaster balls and poured it on the head of Jesus. What Simon did not do, anointed his feet and began to weep and used the tears to wash the feet of Jesus and clean that dirty feet. It was, she was kissing the feet. And using her hair to clean the feet. You probably don't understand what that woman went through. You probably don't think before now that it's, you, you probably thought it was a joke. No man did Jesus much honor than that woman. Jesus, you know, there were about three of them. This is one that the Bible scholar called Mary Magdalene. Out of whom Jesus cast out seven devils. That woman was one of the most powerful women that followed Jesus. She was the first person to see Jesus after resurrection. All disciples went to him and said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I am. She loved him up to death. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Number two, I want you to know that God's acceptable worship and service is very costly. I told you that a pastor boss can cost one year of wage. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. David said, I will not offer unto God something that will cost me nothing. What, what does your service cost you? You come late. I'm not saying you are coming from, from you, are, you are coming from work, your schedule. You come late voluntarily to church. It didn't cost you your sleep. How do you want to be changed? How do you want Jesus to visit you? Your service to God does not cost you anything. You do it at convenience. If we say, please come as we say, no, it's not convenient for me. You'll never be changed that way. Your life will never receive touch from Jesus that way. Because you always, you think it was convenient for Jesus to die for your sins. Why should it be convenient for you to serve him? We have gotten, our mindset has been twisted by the devil. And we thought, we have, we have embraced the gospel of convenience. There is nothing like that. The Bible says, as, as soldiers of Christ, Endure harsh. There are days when we will not have food. Then we don't start costing God because there's no food on our table. I was serving as an NYC. Some of you that were in Nigeria will understand. In the city of Abuja, and for days I had no food. Please understand I was not fasting. I just didn't have food to eat. For three months I was sleeping on the street in my own country. And I was a born again Christian. I was a Bible, I was a Sunday school teacher. And I was teaching from house to house, Bible, Bible, for people that were in, in discipleship class. One woman met me and said, Brother, you, you are smelling. I said, you are right. I said, but why? I said, I haven't bathed for this. He said, but why? I said, I didn't have anywhere to bathe. He said, what do you mean? I said, I lost my house. And she talked to her, her husband. He said, please come and be staying here. Please understand that in the church where I attend, it's a redeemed church. There's a, there was a pastor there. I will go in there overnight so that I can pray with people by fire by force, night vigil. So that after night vigil, I can sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, I will use the restroom of the church. 
Then one of the ministers, Dickens, went to tell Pastor that, Brother Lee is coming every day to come and pray with everybody. And he's sleeping, I think he doesn't have a house. Please kick him out. And they kicked me out from my own church. They did. Even in the church, we can't find love. There's a problem. And the woman said I should be staying in her house. I had a small bag. I had my brush, a very small towel. Whenever it's 6 p.m., I would look around and say, Lord, where am I going to sleep today? I didn't have a car, so I couldn't sleep in the car. I could have said, Jesus, to hell with you, I'm done. No. As a good soldier of Christ, endure hardship. Gospel of convenience has robbed us of the courtly sacrifice. That alabaster boss of oil was very precious. The woman broke with at the feet of Jesus. Your service must cost you something. Your love for God has to cost you something if you, are, if you actually love him. Don't show up here every Sunday service and nothing. It has cost you nothing. Don't show up here for Thanksgiving service and when we say sing. You're wasting your time. I just want to announce to you. Throw yourself up. Even if you don't feel like it. Do it. Motivate yourself. Let your service to God cost you nothing. Time will not permit me. I see you have a long way to go. Alright. We have gone over the alabaster box. Meet the sinner woman. She was weeping and was pouring that weeping on the feet of Jesus and was, and was wiping away the dust, the dung from the feet of the master with her hair. How many of us can do that with The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 11 verse 15 that the glory of a woman is her hair. What does that translate to me? Can you, can you dismantle your glory to serve the master? To dust the dirty feet of the master? What is this that you cannot do in the house of God? You know when it comes to cleaning the restroom, some of us cannot do it. Then what has your service cost you? We see it as, I'm not saying you don't have the time, but some of us in our minds say me, clean the restroom, that everybody in the church will, will go and poo poo. No problem. That woman was using, she was kissing the feet of Jesus, full of dead and dumb. And she was anointing it, weeping, and wiping it away with her hair. She lose her hair, and she was wiping it away. And Jesus was sitting down watching her. Say, oh my God. Nobody ever did me this kind of honor. And no man did Jesus that kind of honor. Anymore. No wonder Jesus said, wherever the gospel of this kingdom is preached, what this woman has done shall be told for a memorial. What will be the memorial before God for you? What will your service cost you? As we are gathered today to say thank you, Lord, today, would you do it from your heart? Or you think because your prayers have not been answered? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. She broke. Let's look at what the woman did. Number one, she broke the alabaster box. It's on the screen. Number two, she anointed Jesus' head. Number three, she stood at Jesus' feet and began to weep. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 says, Godly sorrow bring her repentance. That was repentance. The Bible calls him a that woman a sinner. She was a prostitute. Brethren, let me tell you one thing. Everybody was invited to that, to that, uh, um, that dinner. That woman wasn't invited. Just so you know. She was a great crasher. She wasn't, in, or did you think Simon invited her? The Bible said where you read. When she heard that Jesus was in the house of Simon, she did not wait for invitation. Brother, sometimes you need to come to Jesus without waiting for somebody to, to invite you. Don't wait for invitation. Call on the master. The Bible said, call upon me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things. Some of us are waiting for somebody to invite us. Hey, brethren, hey, please come and clean here. Why do you wait for the invitation? Why don't you do it if you feel like he's dead? The altar is dead. I just want to take it upon myself. Didn't your Bible say God loves a cheerful giver? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of us want pastor to force you so that you can go out there and say pastor is forcing me. 
Some of us want pastor to come and lie down and beg. That woman was not beg. She was not invited. She came by herself. She heard that the master was in the house of, the, of Simon the leper. And said, even though I, I didn't get an invitation, I am going to show up. I have to meet the master. I don't need an invitation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's move on. And she kissed his feet and anointed his feet. And then when I go to more, number three, the breaking of the alabaster boss represents brokenness. Brethren, I read to you Psalm 51, verse 7. Psalm 51, verse 7. Can someone help me? Psalm 51, verse 7. Psalm 51, verse 7. Nobody is there. You find me with Esau. 17, mommy. 17, sorry. 17, not. 17. 71 verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. These, oh God, you, you will not despise. Many of us are not broken. And that's why our worship, our sacrifice are not accepted. We are full of pride. Did you hear he talk to me? Who are you? How did they talk to Jesus? Did you hear he addressed me? Who are you? Who are you? I'm asking you. Are you bigger than Jesus? No. God bless you, my dear. <laughs> and we carry ourselves like this. And that's why we cannot, we cannot wash the battle. Please understand I'm not talking, I'm not particularly about battle because not everybody will be here. Don't get me right. Whatever you can find to do, there is so much to you can do. Ordinary posting on social media, you can do that for the church. Ordinary editing, you can. Whatever you can do, there's one hundred and one thing to do. But some of us, we are, we are full, full of ourselves. We are not broken. And that's why we don't get visitation from God. The broken of the alabaster boss represents brokenness. A broken and contrite spirit that will not despise. She wept at the feet of Jesus. Repentance. Repentance. For everything we have done, we have, we have done wrong. You know, some, of us, some of us think we are okay. We don't need repentance. Why should you? God bless you. I needed. I was here a few hours ago for about four hours. Pray and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on everybody. Maybe you don't need it. I do. I do and I will ever need it forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our greatest and highest form of sacrifice, of worship, pours out of a most Pour out, sorry, as a most precious fragrance and sweet smelling savor to the Lord can only come from hearts that are broken and are contrite. Our, our sacrifice, at most you no know, sacrificial, acceptable worship can only come from out of a broken heart. When the heart is broken, our sacrifice and our worship be accepted. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The greatest and the best form of worship is to offer all your life to God. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Brethren, I beseech you by the mercy of God that you present your bodies as an acceptable service. Only an acceptable one to God. For this is your reasonable service. Your bodies. When you present your all, your soul, your mind to God, that is when you are offering an acceptable service. An acceptable worship. An alabaster boss of oil. Remember when I, when the woman broke the oil. The, the alabaster boss of oil always had powerful fragrance. If everywhere was filled with this fragrance, and everywhere was so sweet, the fragrance you can pour at, at the feet of God was, you know, that sacrificial worship, sacrificial praise, your life, sacrificial giving, sacrificial prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Not the one that you do at, the, at your convenience. The sacrificial one. Your service must cost you something. I don't know what yours is costing you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number four. Matthew 26 verse 13. Let's read this. We may not be able to finish everything. I never preached from that passage, this passage of the Bible. But God was gracious. I was reading the view that I said, oh my God. I never saw what this woman was doing. That woman paid Jesus the highest honor on the surface of the earth. K 
kissing those dirty feet with dung and washing that with her, those with her tears and cleaning them with her hair. She didn't care. Verse 13 of Matthew 26. What did he say? Assuredly, I say to you, whenever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be also told as a memorial to her. Brethren, there's memorial both in this world and the world to come. God has kept a book of memorial for his children that will pour out acceptable service and worship unto him out of a contract and a broken heart. Not out of pride. But we see, why is Pastor talking to me like that? Doesn't he know that I have I, you know, I have five PhDs? Praise the Lord. Amen. Christ is most honored. In and true is saint. Christ is most honored. In and true is saint. That woman, Christ was honored in her because of the sacrifice. He, he will be honored in you. In the name of Jesus. He's honored in his ministers, in his servants. It doesn't matter how they look. They may not look perfect to you. Jesus didn't look perfect either. The Bible says we have this treasure in acting vessel. We don't have to be perfect. But if you despise a, a man of God, you are just despised part of the glory and beauty and blessings of your life. I'm just announcing to you. Many people despise Christ. They say, ordinary carpenter. And they, they will pay for it dearly in all eternity. Don't be a fool. Be wise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's remembrance for everything you are doing for the name of the Lord and for his kingdom. Both this world and the world to come. Let's see. I want to run over that to see how we can compare Simon. And then we do one more thing and then we we'll close because of the time. Uh, I wouldn't be able to finish it. Let's compare Simon. Comparing Simon and the woman. Simon invited Jesus to dinner to confirm his disbelief. He will say, but why? Don't worry. Let's read. He didn't treat Jesus like a guest. I explained that to you. He questioned Jesus' reputation as if he said, if this man was a prophet, he will have known that this woman that is wiping her, his feet is a sinner. You see? He judged Jesus. He said Jesus was not even a prophet. He did not even believe that Jesus was a prophet, talk less of a savior. Let you know savior. He said, if this man, if this man is a prophet as a claim, he will know that this woman that is, that is using her here to clean her, his feet, is a sinner. Samuel, uh, Simon and his friends at the table expressed dismay at Jesus even forgiving sin. They said, who is this person that is forgiving sin? Who does he think he is? Let's look at the woman. The woman came to the dinner to express her own belief while Simon was expressing his own disbelief because he was a Pharisee, just want to confirm. Said, I don't believe this man is a prophet. She sought Jesus out where she was not, where she wasn't wanted. She wasn't, she was not invited there. Number three, two, she gave Jesus her most costly possession, the alabaster jar of oil, precious to her. Brother, let me say it here for those that are single. That woman was not married. That's why she had an abasta boss. And she broke out at the feet of Jesus. Brethren, the best time to give Jesus the best worship and sacrifice is your time of singleness. Amen. She sacrificed of her own person because there will be no husband and child to drive you back. Don't worry, trust me. I'm telling you the truth. That is the best time to give God the most quality and precious worship. That's the time to break your alabaster boss of service, of ointment, of fragrance, of praise, of worship to God. It Amen. is in single, your single year. Amen. That's the best time. Amen. When you want to go to Colorado and preach, and you can go. The man says, you are not going. How can you go? There's only $500 left. We are going to use that to pay all the, all the bills. You can't travel to Colorado and join any, any, any prayer meeting. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The woman believed that Jesus is the rock of salvation. How? She anointed the Lord of Jesus. Do you know what it means to anoint somebody's head? In Israel, there were about two people that got anointed. The priest and the, and the what? And the what? Kings. And the king. This woman believed that Jesus is the king of kings. That's why she anointed her head. She believed he's the priest of the Mosah that will take away our sins. 
That's why she anointed her. She anointed him. He anointed his head. Bible says in Psalm 23, he anointed my head and my with oil and my and what? My call and run it over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm sure that woman had read that psalm. Praise the Lord. And Jesus forgave her sins. Did you read that? Your sins are forgiven. Your faith has made you whole. Simon's sins were not forgiven. Even though she invited, invited, he invited Jesus to his house. Simon's was never given the, the right of sonship into the kingdom of God. Even though she was, he was the one that did the invitation. This woman did not invite Jesus. She just showed up. She got forgiveness. She got the right as a child, a daughter into the, into the glorious kingdom. She, her right, righteousness of God was credited to her account. Her sins were forgiven. She got peace that passes all understanding and without doing nothing. She just came and did that. She was not invited. She just broke her heart. Fireman did not get that. That's why I told you, Jesus can live in your house. Nothing will happen. You will not be changed by the glory of his presence because of your attitude, because you are taking him for granted. Don't come to service here anymore. My sincere advice for you, and engage in talk if you are in the presence of God. My sincere warning for you. You can take it, you may not take it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I ran up after comparison. Imagine the disciple. That's where I stop for time's sake because I passed my time. Verse 8 and 9 of Matthew 26. Can we read that before we go? Verse 8 and 9 of Matthew 26. But when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrance of oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Let me tell you, as they got angry, in fact, the Bible says that uh, si um, Judas was the one that even got more angry. He said, Ah, what is wrong with this master? In fact, for this he did, I'm going to, I'm going to go. He, he then went straight and said to the, the sheep priest, how much are you willing to pay for him? I will sell him off. He sold this master out. The son of the living God. You know, that's the, the problem with the mindset. He didn't know he was, who he was dealing with. The master, the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, the man that brought salvation to the world. You know what? Judas sold him off for 30 pieces of silver. In everyday life, we sell off Jesus and his presence and his glory for seven dollars an hour. Rather than creating 30 minutes to worship, to break an alabaster bus, we rather choose more time and add it on top. Say, you know what? That one hour that you said is left, add it to my time. Seven dollars an hour. We sell him off at that price. And that's why we're not changed. That's why nothing happens year in and year out. No change. We don't expect anything when we come to church. We behave anyhow. We go on social media when we are here. Things that you will not do if the President of the United States is here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, you must honor the Lord. You must honor the Master. You must honor Him in every respect. Not only in the service, every day of your life. You know, there's a song that says, Jesus must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life every day. I love that song. You can find it on probably on, I don't know whether it's on YouTube now, sung by one guy from Nigeria, Buchi. And will Jesus be honored in your life today? Will you break your alabaster boss of oil in thanksgiving, in praise, and in worship? Will you pour out your life like that fragrance? before the Lord today. You know one of the reasons why some of us don't break our lab other? When was the last time you rolled on the floor when you are thanking God? Because you have $2,000 dollars suit. I'm sorry for you. How much is that? Some of us cannot roll down, cannot kneel down with her because we have precious clothes. Ah, uh, who is Jesus for me to roll down the floor? My $2,000 suit. Seriously? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we ask people to sing and honor Jesus, Jesus must be honored. Really, it will be honored that way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lastly, as I close, the seven areas of your service one, sacrificial giving. 
brethren, you may have to give sacrificially and I mean your life and everything. I'm telling you, my first car, my wife came home one day and said, I went to the prayer meeting and the Lord said I should give the car. I said, please don't try me. <laughs> don't try me. This is the only car we have. And our church was like from here to Pittsburgh and that's the only way we will get there. How do you want to give the car? So the next week I went for the same prayer meeting and the Holy Spirit told me himself, drop the car. So I said next Wednesday, so it's a Wednesday program at 12. I brought it Wednesday, the next week, seven days later. When I dropped the key on the order, I was sweating like Christmas goat. I rushed out of the, out of the service with carless, and I stood by the road for the first time, waiting for taxi in Abuja. And let me tell you, in Abuja, taxi from one place to the other, 2,000, 3,000 naira, Nigerian money. It was very expensive. So in a day, when I go to three places, I've sent 8,000. But in about three months, the car that nobody has ridden in my family, I bought it for about 1.2 million naira. I didn't struggle for it. Somebody asked me to buy a land and pay me 1 million naira for buying the land. I had a $200,000 or 300 and I bought that car. It was the best at that time. One of the best. One of the best at that time. When I, my wife showed the car, old car was in the church. They packed all the people that gave the car. They packed it there. And he showed it to one lady that was trying to get married. And she's not sure of the guy because the guy does not look rich. But the question is, did the, the girl ask you to marry the guy? She said, go ahead. My wife said, come, let me show you. This was our old car. This is our new car now. She put her head for her hand for head. Because that car that was even saying, I have to put water in it if I drive for every five miles. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There was time in Nigeria. We'll give out like today. It's five thousand, ten thousand dollars at the time. It must cost you something. Prayer, your life, service and commitment, your love, brokenness and humility. Would you be ready in this Thanksgiving? to give God your best form of worship and sacrifice. Would you break your alabaster boss? That question, only you can answer. But we have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. You don't even have any alabaster boss. You must come to him first as your Lord and personal savior. You must realize that all men have sinned and conscious of the glory of God. Number two, you must confess your sin. And number three, ask Jesus to come into the Lord, into your heart and be your personal Lord and savior. I sure hope that the word of God has blessed you. God bless you. In Jesus' name.